LS Car Doctor. Welcome back to my channel, good people. In today's video, we're gonna be replacing two cams and um, I'm gonna be showing you how to use this special tool to make this job easier for you. So, replacing two cams, and all the lifters, and all the rockers. All right, let's jump right into it. All right, guys, this is where we are. Let me bring you back up to speed. So the last video, I removed the valve covers and intake and we discovered two damaged camshafts. Um, so I got the approval on the camshaft from the customer. You can see it chewed up the edges. Um, I talked about this in the last video. I'm not gonna re-talk about it. And it's another one over here. Yep, chewed up edges. So we don't wanna see that. We wanna see nice and smooth. Alrighty, so let me go ahead and show you what we're gonna do next. Put you back up here. Voila, nice and easy. Come on. I said nice and easy. Alright. Now what I'm gonna do, I always make this a habit anytime I'm messing around with the timing, even though I know I have the special tools. I like to what I like to call pre-game. You know what I'm talking about, guys. Free game before you go to the club, you know. <laughs> I'm gonna take my inch and 1 16th drive and put it on the crank. We're not gonna turn the engine over by the cams. That's a good way to skip teeth and you'll throw everything out of timing. We don't want that. So we're almost in pre-time. Um, these are the timing marks. So I'm just gonna simply turn them over to the 12 o'clock position, which well, where I think the 12 o'clock position is. And I'm going to take some white out and mark it. Voila. And the reason I'm doing this is because if anything happens like a teeth jump off or something weird, I would know where um, I would, I would know where my mark's at and be able to put it back where it needs to be pretty quick. So it's always a good idea to do this. Let me show you exactly what I did. So these are my timing marks. I just put a mark here. So if I put everything back together and this is over here, I know something is off. So after I finish with everything, everything should line back up perfect. All right. Now, I'm going to start with the hard side first. Um, the reason I say this the hard side first because you have a ratcheting uh, you have a ratcheting come on. I don't lost my train of thought here. <laughs> you have a ratcheting um, tensioner. Oh my gosh, I couldn't get it out. A time and chain tensioner is ratcheting. So you have to release the ratcheting portion of it and um, install this tool. Yes, mine's a little broken, so it's gonna be a lot harder for me, but it's supposed to look like this. Uh, one of my guys broke it by mistake. No big deal, I just replace it. But you install this tool, I'm gonna show you how that works. But the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna install this block and it has right and left on it. Um, so left side, right side. I'm, I'm assuming they're talking about my right. Uh, and sometimes this needs a little persuasion. You will have to go down at the crank pulley and turn it just slightly to line up the teeth in this groove. So just like that. See how I just slid right in? And could I just put the other one in too? Yeah, I could. Let's see if it'll work. Nope. <laughs> so we're gonna do one at a time. All right, now let me go get an example because you're not gonna be able to see what I'm doing here with this tool. Um, I'm gonna try to show it, but you're gonna be like, huh? So let me go get my example. This is the tensioner that's on this driver's side bank here. And in, as you can see, it's, it's a hydraulic, but then you have a ratcheting portion. See the little teeth? It's like little steps. So if I try to push this back, 
I can't push it back because it has this ratcheting ordeal. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this tool, shove it down in there, lift up so I can push it back and install the, the, um, the holding tool. So that's what I'm about to do now. So let's see. It's a little tricky guys. Uh, you kind of need a light and you kind of got to know where this hole is. So once you find this top hole right here, the bottom hole is right beneath. So you find that top hole, which you can see the top portion from at the top. And you just stick the tool down, lining it up with this and bam, you'll find the big hole so you can release it. So that's how I do it. But you're kind of working blind. gonna be able to find the hole today what's going on <laughs> all right so, i'm gonna guess this is the hardest part but i got it up in there and i'm basically just gonna lift up take my broken tool if it still works and shove it up in there and that takes the pressure off the tensioner now since my tool is broken it ain't working as good, so I'm going to have to give it a little persuasion. It's supposed to just stay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right. Cool, cool, cool. The next thing I'm going to do is crank my oil control. Um, these are phasers, but I think Chrysler say they oil control valves. I call them phasers. So I'm gonna take my phaser bolts out or my cam gear bolts out. They call many things. So, and I think that is a, this is not the size for that. Let me go grab the size and I'll let you know in a little bit. So I'm gonna use a 36 millimeter. It fits okay. Um, and this is an inch drive. I'm gonna turn it into a um, half inch. And it really helps because you can break these loose with this tool in place. So that's pretty neat. Uh oh, my tool has popped out. I get her back in there in a little bit. And if I remember correctly, these are torqued down to 110 inch, uh, 10 foot pounds, these bolts. You want to know the torque thing. down in there and I try to show you guys a good view of what's going on with this tool now since it's broken it's kind of flicked it uh, but it goes down in there similar to that and these little dots right here lines up the keyway so there's a keyway on this cam here right there that's the keyway and there's an indention on these phasers I'm gonna call them phasers or cam gears I don't like using oil control valves for some reason and long as you line these dots up together they'll fit right in the keyway it takes the guesswork out of stuff for you all right so I can gently pull these back like so now I'm ready to remove my cams and these are gonna be T30s. Yep. So, when removing cams, you have to be careful because 
it has spring loaded tension on these on this stuff so I'm gonna break them all loose I like to start from the inside and break them loose nice and even Go a little bit. And I think it's take all the pressure is off the cam. You know when all the pressure is off the cam when these kind of move freely. See how this one is not moving freely, it still got a little pressure on it. So, let's get the pressure off of it. All right, I'm gonna show you guys something else. Once I get these off. And I'm gonna kind of prove it to you as well. So, on these cam caps, you have an arrow facing forward and you have a number one and an eye. Number one intake. So, it goes like this, one, two, three, four. So, this one should read number two eye. All right, now for the exhaust, it's gonna read number one E. So you can really just mix these up. It don't really matter. As you can see, I'm gonna do right now. Um, also, check your journals. Make sure they're nice and smooth. This one is got light scratches in it, but nothing catches my fingernail. So that's acceptable. Uh, check all your journals. Like this one is like real nice and polished almost one little groove always check your journals because that will tell you if you're having any type of problems or not so if you're seeing any kind of scoring or whatnot you need to start looking at other stuff so this is the good cam so i'm going to get it out of here i'm about to give it a little twist which i need some pliers for that. I don't have any in reach. So let me go grab some pliers. So on these cams, you have a little slot where you can put a wrench or in my case, I'm gonna use pliers. I prefer you to use a wrench, but if you don't have it, it's fine. So we're gonna double check our cam here just to make sure. And we're gonna clean our pickup with a rag. Um, this is the magnet pickup or trigger wheel for the camshaft. This is what your camshaft sensor reads off of. So, we're looking real good on this cam. All right. I'm just gonna lay this right here and my piece popped out of place. Come on, do me right. This really gonna play and play when I really go start to go back on. Yeah, he does. I know I'm just going to leave that there for now. I'll come back to that later. All right, let's start taking our rockers off. I like to do one by one. I don't know. It's just me. And I like to check them, each individual one. All right, this one is starting to have a minute amount of play in it. You can kind of tell. That one ain't really doing that. So that one was about to go nice and sturdy sideways. Let's see. Good. Good. Now I'm going to toss these to the side. Let's see. Let's put them right here. Right behind me. Remove all my lifters.
voila yeah you can check them just by pushing down normally these don't go bad but the rule of thumb is if you're replacing the rockers replace these two better safe than sorry I went ahead and soaked my parts in oil. That's a very good idea to do so. And we're just gonna drop them in. And I don't think I even have enough lifters. I'm gonna have to check my, the parts because it seems like I have way more rockers than I do lifters. So I may have to order some more parts. So it should be two, four, six. Six lifters and six rockers per cam. So when we're putting this on, we wanna make sure it's seated properly. Um, I've seen where these have, you know, not been seated properly and caused issues. Um, so you don't wanna cause any issues. You wanna fix the, fix the vehicle right. This job is not for the faint of heart, you know. You're scared to get greasy and messy and and not patient. This job is not for you. So Alright. I'm gonna wipe down my wheel. Get it all nice and clean. And I'm gonna put it, find the neutral position. So there's a neutral position to this. I found it already. The neutral position is pretty much is gonna be pretty flat. But if it was in there any kind of other way, it'll be, this side will be lifted up and it's just be all afflicted looking. So just roll it over and you can find the neutral position because it'll be pretty even and have just a slight bit of where you can do this to it. Um, that's what I like to do. Now, remember I mixed up the cams earlier, the cam caps? So I'm simply just gonna follow what I was talking about earlier. That's one. And make sure your hands is clean when doing this process. Two. And make sure the arrow is facing forward. Three. Now, when tightening these, these are 89 inch pounds. I repeat, inch pounds, not foot pounds. You can snap these off in there pretty easily if you're not careful. So, what I like to do is just run them up. I like to use my hands on this process. I'm about to go grab my ratchet in a little bit or just use my electric ratchet but not use the electric portion to run them down. You'll see what I'm talking about. Now you want to feel for this stuff. Alright. This is really too big. Not ratcheting. <laughs> Let me go grab my smaller ratchet. All right, the same way we're gonna loosen it, we're gonna kind of start off in the middle, tightening each one just a little bit. We're not gonna fully tighten it down. I've seen these things, these cams crack before, and we don't want to crack a cam. And as you can see, I'm not all the way back here with the ratchet. I'm up really close, so I won't apply much torque because I'm gonna go back and torque it. And I don't want to over torque it with my hand. Now, it's time for the torque wrench. And we already have a 30 on there, so great. 
All right, sit still, it says. It's turning off by itself. What's going on? And let's see. What the world? Come on, snap on, don't fail me. Let's just start you over. All right, let me sit you still because you flipped out on me already. All right. So look, I N pounds, inch pounds. So we're going to bring that down to 89. All right, just like that. That one is done. Now go back and double check, make sure they're all in the channel, not sitting sideways or nothing funny. We're looking good. All right. Now let's start on the, the broken cam. Mm. And for the parts, I'm using all milling. And that was just the cam dropping in the neutral position. That's perfectly fine. Yours may do that at home. So don't be scared. Nothing bad happens. The neutral position is more of all the valves are closed. So no, it did not smack a valve or anything like that. And plus, that's why I like to that's why I like to put it in time. Because normally when it's in time like that, you're not in danger of smacking any valves. So all of them are loose. Well, I'm going ahead and start pulling them up. Check them as I'm pulling them up. It's okay if you see little scratch wear patterns, by the way. That's fine. Like I said, as long as you can't dig your nail in it. So, this cam is trash because of the outer edges are, outer edges are ate up um, very slightly. And like I said, I'm a shop good people in my last video, and I like for it to have all the surface area intact because over time, by those outer edges being ate up, this have a good chance of mushrooming out. That cam is no good, and this is the culprit that ate up that cam. Look at that. So the, the cam will start digging into the edges right here. Uh, I can see it. Yeah. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, where it's kind of been riding right there. I say that to the customer. A little souvenir. Pull all my lifters out. It's six of these. Remember that. I like to count as I go in. Normally I count in my head, but let's try out loud. Two. 
three, four, five, six. So I know I'm good. Now, time for the rockers. One. Two, three, four, five, and six. Now, This round part goes here, like so. If you were wondering, <laughs> probably not. All right. Let me show you what I was talking about. Just like the other one said, a number and an I, this one say a number and an E for exhaust. And on these cams, they're labeled as well, so. The left bank, left side is the driver's side because you don't look at it facing you saying, oh, if you look at it, it's, this is the right side, but you're supposed to be inside the car looking forward. That'll make it the left. That's how you know it's the left. So left exhaust, that's the one we're replacing. So we just want to double check that. Now you can use assembly loop, but I like to use oil. That's perfectly fine. And we're going to find our neutral position, which is right there. All right. Like before. This is two. And you got to always make sure the arrows face down because now uh, versus the, the ones at the top, I can see. But if I would have put it on top, the arrow would have been facing back. So I got to, you know, put it down that way. They go opposite of each other. Yes, it's very hot, guys. I'm burning up for you guys because, you know, I don't want too much wind noise on me when I'm trying to make this video. So y'all make sure y'all hit this like and subscribe button because I'm hot. And I could be sitting in front of the fan, <laughs> not sweating. So y'all show some love. E, uh, four E, oh, that's the last one. And this should be one E. Like before, run them up by hand. Not much torque. Never use power tools on this stuff because that's how you strip out stuff. Not recommended unless you like removing strip bolts and things like that, which is not fun. Hey, right. Again, I'm going to check and make sure they're in the grooves where they're supposed to be. Make sure they didn't pop out. Now, time to put the solenoids back on. Let's get you a closer look in here. Let's see. 
what kind of view I can get you. Apparently not a good one. This stuff's not acting right. All right. Cool. Now, I'm gonna move this tensioner out the way. This should just slide right back up on there. And I like to kind of use the bolts as a guide. I kind of run the bolts in like this, catch a couple of threads. like that and I'm holding my tool because my tool is broken you know, you know I'm keeping slack in the chain because once this thing ratchet out on you you no longer have slack on it and it'll be almost impossible to put this these uh, phasers on especially on this side all right the next thing the next thing I'm gonna do I can completely remove the tool at this point. I'm gonna line up my dots. Um, I'll show you again in a little bit. But I'm gonna use my pliers. Bam. And um, way down there. Jeez. All right, now that my dots are lined up, I can go ahead and start running these up. And I don't have to worry about my king, my, my alignment pin being in the wrong spot. Cause I, I know once these dots are lined up, I'm good. Mm-hmm. Cool. Whew. All right. <laughs> like that. Let me go grab my bigger torque wrench so I can torque these down at 110. Same process, we're gonna use um, the left and try to wedge this in place um, by turning over the engine and letting it fall in the grooves. Let's see here. It's in the grooves, just need a little persuasion. Voila. As you can see, I wasn't tapping it hard at all. Just very light little taps. All right. Now, I'm gonna break my phaser bolts loose. Pretty much the same process. Woo. Tight. Put my body into that one. But this time I'm not using the, the tool because like I mentioned, it's just on a hydraulic tensioner and it's very easy to compress. Now you can, if you want, um, it's very hard to show you what's going on without a, a shoot. No, don't do that. Snatch the tool out. Hurry up, get that back in there. All right, <laughs> we're safe. Slide those out. Um, let me show you guys how the tool goes into place for guys at home that want to know and prefer to use the tool. So I can't exclude no information. Yeah, exclude. <laughs> I get my words confused sometimes. All right, let me take you guys down over to my stripped away engine guys I didn't know my stripped away engine was missing a tensioner I don't feel like looking for it but 
Anywho, it goes down in here sort of like this. There's, it's missing a piece, but that little channel rides down. Um, I forgot how it go, because it's missing a piece. Thank you. Oh, it rides down in this. So the tensioner is gonna come up. I wish it was full, but you stick it right here and it rides down and bam, it relieves the pressure on the tensioner. So that's what that channel was for, that screw. Bam. And speaking of these screws, I can't forget to show you this once we get back to the other engine. Um, I can't believe I forgot to show you guys that, but let me show you now. All right, guys, this is what I almost forgot to show you, but there's these oil passage bolts. Okay, so this tube, oil fills this tube. It's under pressure, pumps up the lifters. And there's these plugs in the front of the engine that always be loose. So you just take a 13 millimeter and while you're down here, just tighten them up. As you can see, they're loose. No! Woo -hoo -hoo! I almost spilled a whole bunch of oil. Okay. Um, but this plugs be loose every time. Let me see, can I get it on camera being loose? So normally they be in here hand tight. Let's see. Okay, so that one was tight. Uh, I guess the heat got to me today because I didn't even tighten this side and it's harder to tighten it with the um, cams in place, but it can be done. So yeah, that one was loose. Tighten that one up. I think this is a very important step to keep, you know, to make sure this stuff is, uh, this oil is staying pressurized and not chewing up your lifter. See, that one was loose. I didn't even put no pressure on it. So I'm gonna tighten that one down. All right. So yeah, that's what I almost forgot to show you guys you back up here and try to finish tightening the other one over there because it was hard to do with just one hand What I did was, it was barely on there, so I just tapped it down on there so I can uh, get it tight. All right, moving along, moving along. All right, we're gonna change out the damage cam first, so that's what we're gonna work on now. All right, just like before, gonna crack them loose. and even. All right, when they loose like that, like I said, you just go ahead and buzz them off. Here is the damaged lobe, a lot better. You can see it now. Look at that, how it's chewed in. It's okay, kind of okay on this side. It's just have a little step right there. Nice groove. All right, let me retrieve this 
Oh, voila, gotcha. And show you the damaged lifter. Not that one, but it was this one. Look at that. And you can kind of tell where it been. Let me see. Yeah, it was cutting in right here. Bag these up for the customer. A little souvenir. So, only two bad lifters. Sometimes I come across a lot more. like before. Find that sweet neutral position. Feels good to me. I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna go ahead and change out this side because uh, I'm gonna torque everything at once. And I like to move my dipstick sometimes because I don't wanna lean on it or break the tip. Oh, this is a lot harder with that little bitty one. So switch to some a little bit, a little bit more um, leverage. All right, guys, to keep this video short, I'm going to, um, my phone just cut off because I'm running out of camera space and making too many videos and not cleaning up my phone. <laughs> so pretty much the same process. Um, I'm going to show you when, when I get finished putting all the lifters and 
things in. I'm going to show you the process of um, me putting this back on. Um, so I'll be right back. Let me go ahead and throw these lifters on. Got an extra one. Not to get something. Alrighty, good people. This is why you um, count. Because <laughs> apparently um, I have an extra lifter and I counted these and one is not been replaced. So I'm going to take this cam back off because I know I replaced all these. And I'm going to check my lifters. Write that in the comment. Let me know which lifter I didn't replace. I'm glad I didn't torque these. clearly tell come on clearly tell the difference look at the wear pattern check that out guys we all make mistakes but you know when you catch your mistake that's what makes you a better mechanic so listen to me count your parts if you have an extra parts if you have an extra part something is wrong Repeat, something is wrong. So, now that we have everything right, I can put this one down. Come on, there we go. Why are you fighting with me? There we go. Sheesh. Don't want to do right. All right. Come on. What's going on with this torque wrench? Slipping out on me. Yeah, 
it was flipping out. Hey, I need to over torque and stuff. Really? Come on, snap on. Expensive torque wrench and don't want to act right. Can't be playing. Guys, I'm just double checking everything. Perfect. All right. Now, for this part, let's get you a closer look. Now, sometime you can just stick a screwdriver up in here and lift up and it should overcome the spring tension. I don't have a screwdriver right now, so I'm gonna go grab one, stop being lazy. <laughs> All right, this is my technique. Basically lift up, well, didn't really have to lift up, but same as before, I'm gonna run this up, try to catch some threads. Lift up on the tool. Oh. The finesse. All right, where's my socket? Here we go. Now, I'm not using the tool on purpose, just, I don't know. I've done these plenty of times before without the tool, so kind of pushing it on there like so. Uh, take a little bit more finesse if you don't have that tool. And I know the comment section, oh, why don't you use the tool? Maybe somebody broke their tool at home like I did. <laughs> really, this helps really well with a pry bar. I I should go get my pry bar versus trying to use a little screwdriver but i'm gonna try without so as long as you can get these caught like i did you're fine catch some threads make sure it's caught grab your half inch start running it up it'll pretty much center itself If I want to use the tool, I just slide it down in here like that. But no, not doing it. We're gonna do this without using the tool. Just lift up, make sure it caught. See, can I get you guys a better view of what's happening here? And of course, I'm not prying on this stuff heavily. I'm just very lightly giving it a little persuasion. Cut 
Because at the tip of these cams, they have a beveled edge, slightly beveled. So it'll roll right up there with no problem. It just makes it easier, especially with that dot for a reference. All right, shake off of it a little bit, start lining up my dots. This car is just moving. That dot lined up. Voila. Again, these are the dots. That dot to that dot. Boom, boom. And now I can just tighten this on down and all is well. Look at that. Hundred and ten inch pounds. Bit. Slide this out. Okay. All smooth. So the next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and put my intake, my valve covers back on. I'm gonna wipe this surface clean. Um, change these gaskets and I'll be back with it running look at all that sweat guys <laughs> all right so I'm not going to show you guys show me I uh, can't get my words out when it's hot it's hot out here you can't think straight I'm not gonna show you me putting it all back together because I already have a video on that uh, put it down in the link in the description uh, so make sure you check that out. Um, I think it may be like part three. Of, I did a long video series on this job. And it was on a Durango, but same process. Um, and plus you saw me took it down. If you can take it down, you should be able to put it back together. <laughs> so guys, I'll be right back once I get this stuff back on. See you soon. Alrighty, good people. She's all back together. She's running. She sound excellent. And I'm putting the last little screw in for the air box. Um, if you watched the first video on this car, remember I notated these two screws were missing and the air box was, you know, kind of up. But come find out the hose was kind of stripped. So I'm putting slightly larger bolts in here to secure it down. But guys, she sounds great. That is how a Pentastar supposed to sound. No trembling, feels good, nice and smooth. Look at that. So I'm gonna go ahead and slap the engine cover back on, which is right here. Don't wanna forget that. Voila, job well done. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial, repair tutorial on how to change out lifters and rockers on this beautiful Dodge Charger behind me. If you like this video, go ahead and help me out. Hit that like and subscribe button, it helps the channel. Keeps me motivated to keep making great content for this, um, you know, for you guys. Because guess what? I love you and I want you to be educated on your vehicle. All right, until next time, Alex Car Doctor out. See you guys on the next video.